right? So we did it. We created a social media policy. I posted it online for everyone to see. Jot that down if you want to take a look at it. It's signed by our CRO, COO and our, IT, our director of IT. And uh, it's approved. And I put that out there publicly for everybody to see because it is my responsibility to share with those people how we are going to be responsible with social media. So let me talk about myth number two that a lot of, a lot of executives think about is that they think social media is just about socializing. And that's not true either. 43% of people that share news share it online through social media nowadays. And 27% of those people are considered frequent sharers and they share 87% of all, the, all that information online. And in fact, I just read something on Twitter today that said the most news sharing online now is being done on Facebook. Okay, that makes sense, right? We learn about things through social media. And social networks are really the way we communicate with those people and they share that information. But see, it's not about social media when we talk about it. We should be talking about what I call communities of interest because communities of interest are why we get together and we talk. Communities, online communities of interest are those people that get together on Facebook and talk about you. You have Facebook, you have Facebook friends. Those friends are the community of interest of all your friends on Facebook is you, okay, that's your, their community of interest. In Northern Virginia, we have a variety of community and uh, communities of interest that people get together about. They talk about um, expectant uh, OBs, right? Uh, pregnant mothers are online on a website called The Bump. They get on there all the time and they talk. Uh, there's uh, breast cancer, there's a variety of cancer online groups. There's patients like me, there's two diabetes, diabetes support group. There are literally thousands of online support groups where your patients right now are on there talking. And it is our responsibility to really look at those communities and start to participate in them. And then, and then if those communities don't exist, we need to create those communities so they, so they can start communicating. That's where we started with our social media. And you have to provide ways to engage with that community because you know, when, when people are in these communities of interest, they don't want to be talked to about things they don't care about. So you have to start asking them questions or answering the questions they're already providing. And the one thing I always say to hospitals is when you're starting these online communities of interest, remember that size doesn't matter. Sometimes those community of interest are pretty small. You just have to learn how to tap into them in the right way and talk to them. This is an example from the bump. We monitor this, we set up a Google alert, it's pretty simple. We said on the, on the site, the bump, anytime a Nova is mentioned, let us know, I get an email. I get things like this, I may cry, I'm about to have a baby and my loved one is sick. What are the policies at Innova for, for uh, bringing loved ones in that have illnesses? She's not asking us, she's asking other people. Well, I jumped in and was able to provide her the answer. Now, of course, all this information is readily available on our website. I provided that to her, but still the point is this is a communication. People are talking about us and so we have to learn how to communicate and engage those communities. And here's probably the most important thing that I can tell you all today is that you need to give your employees access to social media. You need to do it. Because your employees are the biggest community of interest there is about your hospital. And they already are talking about things that they do at, during their work time and their home time. And they're talking about it all the time. If you give them access to social media, they can become an advocacy group for you. And you can engage them. We're undergoing a major initiative at ANOVA right now. It's called Enterprise Social Network, providing social networking communications to all of our employees because they communicate that way already. And moreover, they want to talk about us in a positive way. So I'm going to give them tools. We're working at giving them tools. Now, that might be a hard pill to swallow, giving them access to social media, right? because you know, they're gonna be sitting on Facebook all day and watching YouTube videos like we discussed, right? Well, you know, actually, it's gonna make them more productive employees. And if you go to this website, stopblocking.org, you can find point-by-point -point discussions that are addressed to you that, uh, that indicate how employees that are on social media are more engaged, 
they feel they're trusted better, they become more <coughs> loyal, and you can communicate to them and effectively communicate to all of their communities of interest. So check that out. I know many of you are probably saying, wait, give social media access to my employees. Well, I hate to tell you this, they already have it in their phones <laughs> and they carry their phones to work. So. so how do we find the time to do it? This is very simple. I'm gonna tell you it's a very high level analogy because we are already too busy. How do we do this? Well, what I encourage everybody to do is first get into this in the sip, dip, and bathe approach. Sip, see, social media is a river of information and you kind of have to get into it like a river, right? You first take a little sip from it, right? Just communicate a little bit through Twitter. Maybe you start sharing news about your hospital, maybe some important events that are occurring. Just spend about, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes a day to do it. And then as you get more familiar with using some social media tools, I encourage you to dip a little bit further into it. And this is where you spend more like maybe half an hour to an hour a day using Facebook or YouTube to communicate relevant information to those people that actually care, right? Rather than doing it through, you know, the ways you're doing it now. And then you could dip into it completely by bathing in it. And this is when you can actually put the resources behind a very co conscientious, co you know, concerted effort to use blogs, Facebook for a variety of communications and you spend multiple hours a week doing this. And what you're gonna do, your communicators and your marketers mm -hmm. are gonna find as they move through the sip, dip, bathe approach that they're gonna become more effective and they're gonna start using the tools in a very effective way and actually start to see results because you can measure everything online. Yeah, there is ROI to social media. A lot of people don't think so, but I'm gonna show you how you can measure it because there's a lot of ways that we can measure things. Digital marketing, digital communications, which includes your website and other things, are probably one of the best ways that you can measure things. But on social media, a lot of people talk about, well, we have some X number of fans, friends, or followers. Well, that's not a bad measurement tool. Or maybe we have the reach, we are, we're getting a larger reach now that we're publishing things through Twitter, and that's, that's not a bad, or we have a better relationship, or our reputation is increasing online. Or maybe we talk about the strength, sentiment, and passion. In fact, there's a hundred ways you can measure social media. But where's the beef? Where's the ROI? Because at the end of the day, if you're not measuring what you're doing on social media, you're not effective. So let's talk about what the definition of ROI is. Return on results, I've heard that said before. Return on opportunity, that sounds nice, right? I have an opportunity that I have a return on. Return on engagement. How about likes accumulated from Facebook followers? How about time we invest in Twitter spam? These are all ways we can measure, right? But that's not ROI. When I say ROI, I'm talking about money. This is my friend Chris Bevelo, who actually wrote a really good book called The Marketer's Guide to Measuring Results. And he defines ROI as how you should define ROI. The net financial revenue to the organization from your effort after having accumulated from the effort's costs. Money, dough, bottom line, coin, ROI. How can we use social media to measure ROI? Because if you're not impacting one of these three things in your hospital right now, you're not, you shouldn't be doing it right? Driving growth goals, we all need to grow our business. Lower our marketing and communication costs, lowering costs, it's a way for us to be profitable, or increase satisfaction and loyalty with our followers. Well, it's a very simple formula to do, and I'll show you some examples of how to do that. You can use social media to drive growth goals. This is probably one of the easiest ways to do it, by tapping into these communities of interest, and rely on strong, measurable calls to action. When you post things to, I don't know, people that are interested in let's say um, having a baby, right? You could say, well, we have a variety of services. Why don't you come to our site and check it out? Or why don't you come to one of our virtual tours online? Or just come in online to one of our tours or come to one of our events, right? Um, it, this is uh, it, particularly, you gotta be careful with the way you use your words because you don't wanna do uh, events around joint replacement. You wanna do things around joint pain because more people have joint pain and less people have to have joint replacement surgery, right? So you have to phrase your words the right way. But you lead the social media to these conversion points and build engagement. <laughs> Here's an example of what we did. We, we actually offer bariatric surgery. 
Um, okay, so we did Facebook ads to people in Northern Virginia interested in weight loss. We were able to actually purchase um, ad space only on those pages on Facebook that were people interested in weight loss within a certain age range and a certain geographic code. We created a couple ads promoting it and drove those to a landing page on our spot where they can come in and learn more about our weight loss services. Okay? <coughs> we spent $479 in a month. Over a three month period, we got, well, you can see the numbers here, I won't read them all, 296 clicks, 30 seminar registrations, and there's an average 23% seminar registration conversion to actual surgery. So if we think of our contribution margin from the surgery to be about $3,000, that's $20,000 profit that we originated from a campaign from one month, which is a 13 times ROI, okay, 1,300, 1300 time, right? That's how you measure social media. How about lowering marketing costs? Because we all like to lower our marketing communications costs. Well, this is about aggregating content, populating content in a variety of different areas. And you gotta train the people that are on your social media, and it could be you, or it could be your marketing staff, or it could be a social media person, on how to handle the media, because the media is using social media, right? And you gotta train your social media, as, not only train your social media staff on that, but train the spokespeople about how to use social media. And remember that communication is a little different form of marketing, and you emphasize storytelling. This is an example that actually is uh, one from uh, a colleague of mine, not a, well, not a colleague, another Mayo Clinic Center for Social Media friend, Dana Lewis, who works uh, Swedish in, uh, on the West Coast. She actually uh, did a, a campaign where she was promoting the sleep lab services at her hospital by having someone go in at night and doing the sleep lab and tweeting about it and live video feeding about it because, you know, people that have insomnia are on the web at night and they're tapping and they're understanding what she's talking about here. Well, she got really actually some really good, she's received 10,000 viewers to the program, had some media exposure, 5.5 million media impressions, and if you use the average ROI AVE calculation, which I don't like, you can do that right there, but I actually calculate it this way. I look at the total reach of the program, 5.5 million impressions, I break it down by how many will actually see it, how many will actually, of those seeing it, will find it relevant, how many of it finding relevant will want to learn more, okay? And then what I do is I take those people that are wanting to learn more and figure out how many of those actually start to become interested in sleep services. How do you measure that? Well, maybe they contact your sleep lab to get more information and download a brochure or something of that nature. Then I take the contribution margin associated with this one sleep lab service, and then um, total cost to promote the program is about $10,000, and then I back it all out, and I show 109 time ROI. It's not bad, it's ROI. Are you with me so far? Let's talk about social media to increase satisfaction and loyalty, because that's really what the most important thing you can do, because satisfaction and loyalty is probably the hardest thing to measure and probably the most effective thing you can do. You really have to provide relevant information to non-consumers. Remember, most people don't care about your hospital. They don't want to go to your hospital. They don't need to go to your hospital right now, but they probably will in the future. So what you want to do is you want to use the tools in this way to provide relevant information to those people so that when they do inevitably have to make that choice, they come to you rather than your competitor. And then they look at, you also want to look at crisis management, service recovery, you know, if someone tweets out about stolen babies. Talk to them about that, get involved with that. Monitor real-time feedback, educate, act transparently. And really here, it's about correlated versus causal ROI. We're all, if we're financially driven, you know what that means. So let me tell you a program that we did, it's called Fit for 50. We wanted to promote fitness and wellness. This is kind of the precursor to how we're addressing, um, we're going into wellness marketing um, and sort of setting the framework now for ACOs at our, at our facility. We, uh, we partnered with a local celebrity in, in the D.C. area, you know, Daryl Green, you may have heard of him. He turned 50, he's very fit and well. We created a website portal for people, for him to talk about wellness, interview our doctors, talk about wellness. We had 7,200 people register within three months to this site. And of those, and we also had 550 Facebook followers. I measured these people into our CRM, measured them into our database, and saw that 6,500 of them updated, we had new information about who they were, 
And we had almost 2,200 entirely new records that we pulled into the database by the end of the program. We cross-promoted these people into other services like heart care newsletters, breast cancer newsletters, et cetera. And now what's going on is all these people are more actively engaged. And I'm able to measure their revenue that comes out of these people in our downstream manner. Um, 325 participants went to an 8K fundraiser event. That was simple. We, it was $25 to get in, so, or $20, so that was $6,500. But really, the utilization of our three-month period of time, look at all those new patients that come in. That's, that's contribution margin. It's not big for three months, but when you're talking about wellness, it's pretty big. I think it's pretty good. Most of those went to cardiology appointments, by the way. Kind of interesting. Learned a new behavior. People that are interested in getting fit again, if they're 50 years old, they, have to, they go see a cardiologist first because we kind of suggested that they do. We're measuring this now, and it's actually um, closer to 200 thousand dollars now in contribution margin that we're measuring from this program and it's only just now that we're starting to learn more about these people it's about driving them into our funnel to engage with them we probably all have seen funnels like this before and I won't go through it but uh, you know it's engaging with them through that trust funnel so I'm gonna end really quick with some silver bullets to help you get started as you're getting into your social media strategies. First of all, make sure you get this presentation from NAPH. Review it, share it with your teams. Stop marketing and start communicating and building trust. It's about building trust. Use social media to be relevant to those people that don't care about your hospital. Create a plan and negotiate ROI measurements up front Measure your efforts. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from the failures. Cost point to social media right now is, is time, but there's really no other costs associated with it. Learn from your behaviors. Learn what people want from you so you can communicate better with them. And remember, data without action is useless, so don't measure things you're not prepared to change. And the last silver bullet I'm going to give before Robert gets up here and tell you there's no silver bullets in this everybody has to do it differently so social media it's a it's a it's the most effective way right now to communicate with our stakeholders and we're going to talk about one particular way now rob want to come up <laughs> 